Psalms 32 again as we were going through here looking at some of these things Paul, Paul, <laughs> David uh, admonished us, amen, Paul ends up, it's amazing, you know, I was thinking about this, how in a real sense Paul talking about being saved and saved, 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 you know, Luke talked about it in Acts, Paul Fix up the word runs with it. Amen. Can't can't beat Romans ten thirteen, can you? But it's really when you think about it, who's the first person in the Bible that started calling save say David? Because he kept talking about our salvation and being saved. So uh, that's what was on my mind uh, this morning. How that you know it's really interesting that David had so much to say about being saved and yet it's a real New Testament doctrine and New Testament teaching, amen? The importance of being saved and knowing the Lord and as God's child being disciplined by the Lord, amen? So that's kind of where we're at as we go through this outline of Psalms 32 and um, now we mentioned even in verse 4 there how that uh, it, it ends with for day and night thy hand was heavy upon me my moisture's turned into the drought of summer Selah and we've talked a little bit about that word Selah meaning to stop and think about it but in this particular instance we see the word Selah is connecting the trouble of conviction with the confession to which it led. Amen? Because as we mentioned, David, we pointed out how that whenever Nathan, his friend, pointed out to him his sin, praise God, David was quick to confess his sin. And that's what God wants. Now we get under stressors, and when you get under the stress, you know, you have a emotional response immediately, immediately to to fear and fight or flight. <laughs> uh, and it's good if you can be under Holy Ghost conviction enough that you just fear the Lord and you repent. Amen? And you acknowledge and confess your need of, con of uh, forgiveness. And so by him throwing that word in there right there, we see that's kind of what he's wanting us to think about. Now let's look at the next Selah just for fun. Look at verse 5. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest me the iniquity of my sin. Selah. Amen. So this is connecting this divine forgiveness with prayer and worship, which can be accepted only from those who have this experience. As we've said before, God only whips those He loves and chases whom He receiveth. That's what it says in Revelation 3.19. And you know the verses. I have them all written down. I'd go over them if I thought we needed all of them. But I know we don't need them all. But the Bible speaks how those He loves He chastens. He don't chasten the devil's kids. Right. Now many times we can be buffaloed and fooled because we say, well boy... Ain't he so sincere? Isn't he sincere? Isn't he nice and sincere? We we like we like we like people that are sincere and seem to be caring, you know. But is, is it good enough to be sincere? Never. Won't God accommodate us because we're sincere? No, he will not. It's like the fireman we told you out of Kansas City many years ago when he climbed the ladder. To rescue the baby. The woman was crying, my baby, my baby. And her apartment's on fire. So the fireman had him put water all over him and he put the blanket over him and he climbed into the room and he reached over and got the bed spread off the bed and went over to the baby crib and wrapped that big bed spread around that little bundle and picked it up in his arms and came out the window and went down the ladder and 
Everybody on the sidewalk was applauding, saying, hooray, hooray. He saved the baby, and he walked over and dumped that bundle into the mother's arms, and to the mother's horror, he picked up the baby's doll. Praise the Lord! He's sincere! He's sincere! The baby died and burned in the fire because the fireman was wrong. It ain't good enough to be sincere. Sincere don't count. Which Jesus do you serve? Is it the Jesus of the devil or the Jesus of the Bible? There's a difference. Paul said you've got to have the right Jesus, the right gospel, and the right spirit. Many people are preaching the wrong gospel. It's the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And they baptize in His name. That's not the baptizing that Jesus said to baptize with. Oh, they're sincere. Sincerely wrong. How much do you want to gamble? A lot of people are gambling a whole lot on, well, my ministry, he's sincere, it's okay. No, it's not okay. No, there's a narrow way that leads into life. It's not the broad way. Amen? And so we see here, this is what David brought out. Didn't he just bring it out? Selah. Connecting the divine forgiveness with prayer and worship, which can be accepted only from these or those who have this experience. They've had God's forgiveness and they want God's forgiveness. They want to stay in His favor and forgiveness. They're not interested in the sloppy agape that's taught in the average church today. We see Selah again in verse 7. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. This Selah is connecting the worship and praise with the further instruction and guidance with which such receive. God wants you to continue in the ways of the Lord. But no, as soon as you turn your back on the Lord and say, well, I'm going to check out what the devil's Jesus has got to offer. He might offer me something better. You can be sure you're in trouble. Because those he loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receiveth, the Bible says. And that's one of the ways I knew I was really saved when I was saved. Because I noticed that God seems to keep me on the straight and narrow. And he sure spanks me when I get off of it. Amen? So looking at some of those Selahs, I thought that'd be a blessing and interesting to you. Because mm -hmm. it's true that Proverbs says, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth even as a father. Amen. Number three, God will forgive you if you confess your sins. It's like the little girl that got knocked up and she went up asked the preacher to pray for her and she got saved at a meeting. And guess what? The baby was still in there. The baby didn't disappear. She still had to face the results of her promiscuity. But at least God's going to be there with her now. Praise the Lord. Amen. And every time she'd look at that little kid, she'd be reminded of its father. But he's the God of all grace. Praise the Lord. I was really blessed this week. Uh, uh, yesterday morning, I, I was listening to a Dr. Joe Dispenza. And this doctor, uh, he's a doctor, and he got run over by a truck. <laughs> and he had all kinds of broken ribs, and his back was all broken. They said, man, we need to rub, run two steel rods up your back need to do all this stuff. He said, no, I, I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just going to, I'm just going to meditate. And, and I think, I think I can heal myself and just keep going. And he has. It's amazing because when you see him, you never know he got ran over by a truck. It was all busted up. But, you know, he could, he's walking around a healed man today, and, and he really got into this. He says, you know, well, I really believe our human bodies are made and designed to where if you can just get to where you get tuned in right, you know, you can heal yourself. 
And so he's been a great advocate of t encouraging people to meditate. And take some time to slow down and meditate. Every morning you should stop and take some time to meditate and uh, think things through. Um, the Bible speaks in this Bible over and over about the mind. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. The Bible says that as a man think, thinketh in his heart. And if you ever notice, the Bible over and over talks a lot about the heart. I think that the issues of everything right. Right. are in that heart. That heart's desperately wicked. Who can know it? So you got to watch out. Some people think you're supposed to go by your heart. Not necessarily. And many times your mind tells you one thing and your heart tells you something else. Right. Well, how are you going to know what you're supposed to do unless you stop and meditate and pray, amen, and fast? Right. See? Now there is a means of getting that heart and mind together where it needs to be to where who knows what could be. That's why I've told you many times. We have to be careful when we look at Jesus and all the people he touched and the lives he changed because many of those things could have been like even Adam had some of those powers because he was just a man that's a complete man and it's just true today there are some people that can pray over people and even put their hands on people and on occasion it's a miracle like that something happens you know Dr. Joe was telling how he knows a lady they totally removed her thyroid because that thyroid, you know, was giving her trouble. Sort of like a friend of ours we know of that my brother was telling me about his doctor. He couldn't leave it when he went to see her here recently. She's been helping him get off all his drugs that he has for high blood pressure and stuff. And uh, she had a big cut across her throat and neck because she had her thyroid removed because she had, you know, cancer of her thyroid. And here Dr. Dispenza was saying how he knows this lady, she didn't have a thyroid, but again, by meditating and praying and fasting and getting her mind straight with what God wants her to do in her heart, she grew a new thyroid. <laughs> Ain't that crazy? <laughs> but yet, no, we don't know, we don't know really how much is possible. You know what I mean? Because the truth is, God did make us like David said, we're wonderfully made. Mm -hmm. And if we just quit, you know, getting hung up in the past and fighting the battles of the past, thinking we can never go any further with God when the truth is He wants to forgive us and let us move on to greater things. Amen. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, Paul said, by the renewing of your mind, <coughs> that ye may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Amen. Can you know God's will? Absolutely you can. But we don't want to take the time, amen, to slow down and do any praying and doing any meditating and doing any fasting, for sure. <laughs> amen. <laughs> and we wonder why we're so sick. And uh, the Lord seems to be trying to discipline us because He's trying to get us slowed down and get us where... Maybe if we're flat on our back, we'll start praying and saying, what are we doing here, Lord? <laughs> and He can get our attention. Amen? And He can remind us of the Scriptures. So this is where I love what David's doing here and saying. Hebrews 8, 12, For I will be merciful to... For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Hallelujah. When the Lord says that He'll take our sins and bury them in the sea, he's not going to bring them up against us over and over like the devil does every day. <laughs> now, look what he said in verse 5. I acknowledged my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, amen? Right. He's faithful and forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So not only does He place us from the 
violator column to the righteous column but also he does a work in us and begins to cleanse us so that we don't have the feelings of guilt anymore amen but we've got to acknowledge our sin not try to cover it up and God will then forgive the guilt of our sin and so that's something to think about say la David said amen say la something to think about praise the Lord We've got God's promise, and hallelujah, you can actually see God work in your life and give you second and third opportunities to go on and do and be something for God. Amen. Then next, number four, he says how God will protect you if you are godly. If you're one of his forgiven, amen, then he's going to look out, of you, look out for you special unlike he does for lost people. God knows these people found the devil. The devil will just wear them out. God don't have to do a whole lot to whip any of them. It won't be long and they'll wake up and realize how holy mackerel, the devil's no good. <laughs> I need to seek the Lord. Amen? And so we see this here in verse 6. Amen. For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee. See, see notice that. You know, you got to be one of God's saved for him to take interest in you. Amen. Are you godly or ungodly? Amen. You're one or the other. What would it mean to be a, a godly person? Will that be a man of loving kindness who's experienced this divine grace or favor? Amen? Mm -hmm. Having experienced that, man, that makes you his child in our New Testament ideas of things. Amen? It's a little different than the Old Testament. In David's day, they didn't have it all squared away like we do because the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, is what cleanses us from all sin, the Bible says. So it's a great blessing to know that you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen? And he said, Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto him. Of course, we saw that when the children of Israel went through the Red Sea. Amen? There sure was a lot of water. <laughs> that sure, that sure enough, none of it bothered anybody walking through the Red Sea on dry ground that day. Hallelujah! God is a God that looks out for His own. Amen. Like He did Israel back then. Hallelujah. And so. Uh, David could cry out, Thou art my hiding place. Amen. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Amen. Because God is my righteousness. Amen. Verse 5 said. Amen. Hallelujah. And he is also my hiding place. Verse 7. And he's not just that in verse 8. He's also my guide. Amen. He's, God says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. And so we're told to think about this in verse 7. Amen. Selah. Think about it. Connecting this worship and praise with the further instruction and guidance with which he receives from God. And then all of a sudden we see David's writing now from God's perspective in verse 8. God speaks, amen. And he said, I will instruct thee. See, that's why the title of this Psalm 32 is Mass Kill, amen. Because God has given some instruction here. Amen. Now 
I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. Amen. And so he'll keep you from drowning in the waters of judgment. He'll be your hiding place. He'll protect you from trouble. He'll surround you with the songs of deliverance. Amen. And that's why it's so blessed to go to a Bible-believing church where they know what the psalms and hymns and spiritual songs that a New Testament church should sing. But I expect lost people to be totally just satisfied with just 7-Eleven, 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 7-Eleven. What do you expect from lost people? Right. That's why they call it praise and worship music. Ain't no praise, ain't no worship to it because it's not psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. But it sure is the same 11 words seven times <laughs> over and over and over again. Then he also said what else? Number five, God will instruct and teach you. He'll guide and watch over you. Amen. I will guide thee with mine eye. It's not the all-seeing eye of Satan on the back of a dollar bill <laughs> that the Masonic Lodge made sure to put everywhere so that the all-seeing eye of the devil is everywhere. Amen. And, he, and the Masonic Lodge puts their big G on, the, on their compass and square so that you know that it's Gnosticism. Of course, they lie to people, say that stands for God, but no, it stands for knowledge, Gnosticism. But God wants to instruct, teach, guide. Amen? I will guide thee with mine eye. Be not as the horse or as the mule which have not understanding. Now that's an interesting way of putting it. Did you know there's some animals that are smart and there's some animals that are dumb as a box of rocks? <laughs> Don't you appreciate a smart animal? You know, you can train a chicken, many chickens to do a lot of stuff. Chickens are teachable and trainable. And so are some dogs. So are some cats. And so are some horses. And so are some mules, but yet Boy, when you run across one that's dumb compared to a smart one, boy, do you resent them, and boy, do they make you miserable. It makes you really appreciate the smart ones. And as I've said before, I've watched many a cowboy with this horse, and you know, you got to admire how, that wow, they seem to be of one mind. Many times, I mean, maybe the guy's just saying, or something, but that horse knows what to do, and it can walk sideways or go backwards or forward. It's amazing how some cowboys with the horses, because they have a smart horse, amen? Huh? Or like police horses. Or like police horses, yeah, very well said. Man, there's giant steeds, you know. It's, uh, and, and they got it down to a science, you know. But you take one that's, that's hard-hearted and hard-headed, and they just start bucking, they want to buck it, they won't let nobody ride them. Well, that horse ain't good for nothing but glue. <laughs> we used to use horse blood all the time for glue to make our plywood. I don't, I don't think they use it today. But when I was a little boy growing up, oh, that's what all the plywood was made out of. The plywood was made with different layers of wood and the glue was horse blood. Imagine that. And so the Bible asks that question here. Are you, are you going to be like a stubborn mule or a horse that has no understanding? Whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle? Lest they come near unto thee. Now when we were in the Middle East, you know, it was neat. We all wanted to get off the bus and look at these Arabs. These Arab men would be around and 
they'd be dressed like a sheik or whatever, and they'd have these camels. But they always made sure they had a nice barbed wire fence on the camel's <laughs> mouth and nose because camels are known to bite people. Muzzle. And spit. And spit, yeah. And so they had a nice wire muzzle on these camels because they knew that, you know, they didn't want to tourists to get off the bus and some camel bite them and all of a sudden get sued for a bunch of money. Because some of these animals, buddy, they can sure hurt you. Amen? And so, amen, just like it takes a bit and bridle to control a horse and control a mule or anything else. And now the reason that's used is because you know, them horses the mules, they have just some front teeth here, then they don't have any back teeth back here. And that's where actually you're putting that bridle in. And it's very sensitive in that area. It's very sensitive. So that bridle's arranged and you got a, a strap that goes underneath. So that when you pull on that thing now, and it's, it's made with a, there's always a big loop in the metal that's in its mouth. Now the truth is, he can drink water and he can even chew on some grass and things and hold that bridle in his mouth. But, you get in there and start moving him around, see? And as you're doing that, now that thing is pushing up on the roof of his mouth and, or pushing down on his tongue either way, or, and for sure it's pushing down on this tender part where he has no teeth. And the truth is, if you sense that thing up too tight, and if you were really trying to keep him under control and he's fighting you, you could even break a horse's jaw sometimes with a bridle. Of course, you wouldn't want to do that. But, that's why a bridle works on a horse. Amen? And then a, on, on a mule. And so, let us pray that we're not so stubborn. Amen? And self-willed and ignorant, but we'll be understanding, amen, God and the Lord as he's trying to lead us and guide us where we should go, because we ain't much more intelligent than an old mule or an animal or a horse, amen? Especially when we believe in evolution, we might as well be one, you know. According to the evolutionists, the Pope's a monkey, amen? And yet the Catholics get so mad when you say that, but yet they're the ones that believe in it. I've ever met a Catholic yet that wasn't an evolutionist. Of course, and all the priests are. So God wants to instruct and teach you and guide you and watch over you, but mainly the book of Proverbs bears out it's one thing to have some wisdom and have some instruction, but buddy, it's understanding is what you got to have. That's what the Holy Ghost of God wants you to have. Just get some understanding of God. Understand who He is and what He is. See how particular He is. Again, the devil wants to convince you if somebody's sincere, that's good enough. They're okay. They're not okay. Sincerity is not enough. It's God's way or the highway. Amen? Amen? And that highway is the highway to hell. Amen? So he instructs us. Now, he says, I'll guide you. Did God ever guide anybody in the Bible? Well, uh, let's go to Exodus. Here the children of Israel are wandering around in the wilderness. Amen? And let's see what happened here in Exodus 18, 19. Verse 17 says, And Moses' father-in-law said unto him, The thing that thou doest is not good. Thou wilt surely wear away both thou and this people that is with thee, for this thing is too heavy for thee. Thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. Hearken now unto my voice. I will give thee counsel, and God shall be with thee. Be thou for the people to Godward, that thou mayest bring the causes unto God. Now, Moses needed his father-in-law's 
instruction. Amen? God used Jethro to teach him some things. Verse 20, And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shalt show them the way wherein thou must walk, and the work that thou must do. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties and rulers of tens. Amen. And so forth, so on. And so verse 25, And Moses chose able men out of all Israel and made them heads over people. Amen? They had responsibility. They had someone they could look to for instruction. So God gave Moses Jethro, didn't he? Because Jethro needed some instruction. Well, how about David? Well, it didn't take David long <laughs> to make a mess out of everything as God's chosen king. Amen? But thank God for Nathan. Amen? Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 1. 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 12. Amen. Thank God for Nathan. Somebody said, thank God for Frodo Baggins. No, thank God for Sam, Sam, uh, Sam Wise. Gamwise. Amen? <laughs> I don't think he'd have made it without Sam, do you? I'm with Sam. I'm with the little boy that said, I think Sam was the hero. <laughs> 1 Kings 1.12, look at Nathan here. What a wonderful blessing he ended up being in David's life. 1 Kings 1.12, Now therefore come, let me, I pray thee, give thee counsel that thou mayest save thine own life and the life of thy son, Solomon. David then made a mess of his life and it took the life of his baby, his first baby with Bathsheba. Nathan was warning him, yeah, you'll probably lose his second boy if you keep at it, idiot. Straighten up, clown. Amen. Go and get thee in and unto King David and say unto him, Didst not thou, my lord, O king, swear unto thine handmaid, saying, Assuredly Solomon thy son shall reign after me, that he shall sit upon my throne? Why then doth Adonijah reign? Boy, he almost slipped up, not putting a quail to that rebellion that was going on. Trying to be Mr. Nice Guy. Almost cost him and Solomon the throne. Let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 38, 15. Jeremiah. Thirty-eight, fifteen. Anybody watch the video that was in our newsletter of Jeremiah? You ought to watch it. It's really a blessing because it's easy to forget about what was going on in Jeremiah's life and and how the Bible lays it out. And I thought that movie laid it out so well. I liked that it started out by showing that Jeremiah may have had a girlfriend and he was planning on getting married and all that. But that God came along and told him, No, son, sorry, you're not going to be allowed to get married. You know, boy, it can be a tough thing when God comes along and says, uh, You know, you're going to have to let your girlfriend go. You're going to have to just love the Lord that much. Because, boy, for you to take the stand, I'm going to have you take. You won't be able to do it and have a family. And so he was God's prophet. Of course, nobody believed it at first. In fact, somebody laughed at him at first. <laughs> but it sure turned out, no, he was God's man for the hour. Amen? 
So Jeremiah 38, 15, then Jeremiah said unto Zedekiah, remember King Zedekiah? If I declare it unto thee, wilt thou not surely put me to death? And if I give thee counsel, wilt thou not hearken unto me? Oh man, so Zedekiah the king swears secretly, see? Too busy trying to be Mr. Nice Guy. Trying to keep it all on the sly. Zedekiah the king swears secretly unto Jeremiah, saying, As the Lord liveth that made us this soul, I will not put thee to death, neither will I give thee into the hand of these men that seek thy life. Thank God, God had Jeremiah to give him some instruction. Because, buddy, he'd made some alliances with Egypt and he thought he could break his alliance with Babylon. But, buddy, the king of Babylon's coming after him. And, of course, he'll end up putting his eyes out and you know the story. It's a real mess what happened. But, Jeremiah stayed true. Jeremiah didn't compromise. And that's a lot like we are in the world we're living in right now. See, we, I look like a traitor if I say something, you know, about how Mr. Putin, at least he don't believe in LGBT, and even he made an announcement, wasn't it? This week he made the announcement. Everybody in the world that wants to believe in a family and believe in family values, come here to Russia. We'll... We'll be your haven. God bless him for that. I, I'm all for the man. You know, many many of you today might think, well, oh, no, not this guy. I mean, what about the battle of Armageddon? Yeah, what about it? Satan's son is going to take over the world, and in the end, even Russia is going to attack him, and China is going to attack him, and they're all going to go to the battle of Armageddon to fight the, the world ruler, the son of the devil. But at the last minute, when they see Jesus coming through the sky, well, of course, almost all these people, these nations are lost people, so of course they're just going to turn their guns on Jesus and me, coming right behind him, of course. But when it comes to world affairs, we all know our nation stinks. If you watch the DNC in Chicago the least bit, you know that's a fact. And as sure as they got this guy named Zelensky that they put in power there in the Ukraine crookedly mm -hmm. and then of course he made sure they didn't have no more elections right. so much for democracy he threw that in a garbage can first thing there's no Democrats you know running Ukraine that's for sure they don't believe in democracy but they believe in a dictatorship and that's what they're trying to do to us now so they installed Kamala they want her to be your president, and we're going to go to World War III, so they'll be canceling the election. Yeah. That'll be next. There's no, you ain't going to need to stuff the ballot box. You ain't even going to have no election. Right. And they're going to do what they want to do. Yeah. Now, I hope that you'll survive the fallout. Amen. But God only knows. Amen. Amen. I believe Jesus is coming. He's just seconds away. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> But as a nation, we've been very rebellious. Amen. And I can applaud any man that believes in family values like the Bible does teach. Right. And again, and I don't believe like Mr. Putin believes when it comes to God. He believes he's got to baptize himself every Easter. And I've watched him. He gets down in the ice. He does baptize himself every Easter. At least he's more of a Baptist than the Baptist that we do around here. <laughs> uh, I bet you he even says the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Stephen. But... That isn't what gets you to heaven, though, Mr. Putin. I know you're sincere, but that's sincerely wrong. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but at least he does believe in family values. Well, I can tip my hat to that. Amen. Because here in America, they only believe in LGBT values. They don't believe in no more family. Unless you believe a man can have a baby, then they're all for you. I mean, you talk about messed up. Because they won't receive instruction. Amen. Right. Like God said here. I'll, I'll instruct thee. Teach thee in the way thou shalt go. I'll guide thee with mine eye. Be ye not as the horse or as the mule. Like mule faced. Camela. 
which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with a bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Because if they come near you, they're going to bite you or they're going to spit on you. They're going to bite you or spit on you. I was reading something last night about some little creature and they said, no, watch out, these little creatures. Oh, it's a horny toad. The Indians, you know, they kind of really reverence a horny toad. And if you see one, this guy was out west digging around the Grand Canyon and he found a little horny toad. People were making comments and they were telling him, now watch out because them things can shoot blood out of their eyes. That's what they use to defeat their enemy many times. Well, I mean, that is a crazy thing. Ain't that a wild thing? You don't want them spitting on you shooting blood on you or whatever. <laughs> mm -hmm. Lastly, God's love will surround you if you truly trust Him. Amen. Amen. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked. Amen. But he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. Amen. Ain't it great to know that God's guardian angels are around us? We can sleep at night. He says... Yes, there's a reason to go close to the Lord and draw closer to the Lord. Amen. We can come near to Him for help and instruction so that we can get some help so we can know what we should do so that we can really truly worship Him. Like I said, the lost are trying to worship Him like the Catholics having all the garbage they have and Worshiping the cup and worshiping the bread. They're trying their best to go to heaven. There's no denying they're sincere, but they're sincerely wrong. That ain't how you go to heaven. And they being so lawless and totally disregarding God's true word and God's true Jesus and what he came for, they don't know what we know. So they're going to be full of sorrows. But we that trust in the Lord and have His mercy all around us, we're not going to understand them and all their troubles because, man, we don't have it so bad. Like Jesus said, Come learn to me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you should find rest unto your souls. Man, we're resting in Jesus. They're never resting. They're never sure of nothing. It's miserable to be in a Catholic, not knowing for sure if you're going to go to heaven or not hoping to outrun the devil you know that your good works will outru outdo the bad you've been committing and are committing so be glad in the Lord and rejoice ye righteous and shout for joy amen can you go around singing I got the joy 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 down in my heart Exactly. All ye that are upright in heart. See, if you got it on the inside right, it'll show up on the outside right. Amen. That's what he's saying. We don't have to be like the lost trying to manufacture something. <laughs> Amen. They try their best, but it's always lacking. Amen. That reminded me of the shepherds there when the angel of the Lord told them, hey, check out this baby over here <laughs> in Bethlehem. Boy, they had a reason to get excited, didn't they? We were born unto you this day in the city of David is a Savior, Christ the Lord. Amen. Boy, they had some good news. And buddy, they started sharing it everywhere they went. Hallelujah. Well, we got to quit. Well, we'll finish it up next week then, or week after next, because like I said, we'll take off next.